uh, 30 times before, and I, I don't like reading, uh, which I know is why I've been invited here, and I'm, I'm planning to read a little bit. But um, I, I kind of just enjoy uh, talking. Um, so if you'll indulge me in that for a minute, I want to I want to read off with a joke. And I figure since I uh, just walked over here from the Times, it might as well be a newspaper joke. Um, so this young reporter in a small town in Georgia runs into the newspaper offices and into his editor's office. In office, he's kind of sweaty and he's uh, out of breath, and he says, "Boss, you'll never believe it. I've got the best story of my career." And the boss is like, "What?" What's going on? The guy says, well, I was, I was walking down the street and I saw this, uh, this pit bull run out of nowhere and attack this little girl. It just started uh, ma mauling this little girl and, um, and, and nobody knew what to do. And then this, this man uh, kind of it comes out of nowhere and runs over and grabs the dog uh, and gets the dog in the sleeper hold and pries the dog's jaws off of the little girl and, and saves her life. Uh, saves the life of this, um, this little girl. And the boss is like, yes, okay, this is great, this is great, I've got it tomorrow. Um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> uh, a local man saves girl from the jaws of death. And the reporter's like, I like it, but there's a problem. He actually was a local. And the boss says, okay, let's see. Um, Georgia man uh, saves child from vicious dog. And the reporter says, uh, boss, he was actually from New York, and he was just in town visiting his family. And the editor says, okay, we can still work with this. Let's see. Yankee kills family pets. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so in, uh, in 1955, a 67-year-old woman named um, Emma Gatewood, the mother of 11, a grandmother of 23, great-grandmother of two at the time, told her family that she was going to walk. And she left her small town of Galpamese, Ohio, uh, in, in southeastern Ohio, and made her way down to Mount Oglethorpe in Georgia. And for nine weeks, nobody knew where she was. She basically disappeared. Um, they learned her whereabouts when she dropped a postcard in the mail to her family back home from Roanoke, Virginia, saying, um, when I said I'm taking a walk, I mean I'm trying to hike the Appalachian Trail, which ran 2,050 miles from Mount Oglethorpe in Georgia to Mount Katahdin in Maine, the first place the sun kisses the eastern United States in the morning. Her family, uh, surprisingly enough, wasn't worried. Uh, they knew their mother to be a very strong and independent woman and self-reliant woman. She had been reared on a farm and she had survived a 30-year marriage to an abusive, oppressive, hard-fisted man who beat her within an inch of her life uh, many times over. Um, it took Emma 145 days uh, to finish the 2,050-mile Appalachian Trail. She became the first woman to do it. She became the first person to do it two years later at the age of 69, and then became the first person to do it three times um, a few years later in, in, uh, in 1964. Uh, I tell Emma's story, the untold story. She, she gained a, a, an incredible amount of attention uh, during her through hike, when people heard that this uh, little old woman was out hiking on the Appalachian Trail by herself, uh, when they heard that she had run into uh, bears and rattlesnakes, uh, and uh, when they heard that she had walked through two back-to-back -back hurricanes that made landfall in North Carolina and raked up the eastern seaboard, dumping an unprecedented amount of water on the northeast, uh, people were flabbergasted and the word spread like prairie fire and for the past for the last two uh, or three weeks of her hike there were daily dispatches from the Associated Press running in newspapers across the country and Americans pulled for her in a big way and she achieved this um, really incredible but short-lived amount of celebrity or notoriety at least uh, during during this hike and pe people pulled for her um, and uh, this came at the Interestingly, the tail end of, um, sort of pedestrianism in the United States. Uh, the roads, the interstate highway system was being built at, at, at an exceedingly rapid pace. Um, the 
automobile was finally affordable for uh, people in the suburbs. Um, automobile sales were uh, broke records that year. In the summer of 1955, these two emissaries from the sports world were keynote speakers at a big gathering of family doctors in LA. And they reported uh, to these doctors that well, one was a, the head football coach of uh, UCLA, and the other was a men's uh, Olympic uh, coach. And they reported to this gathering of family doctors that um, the kids they had been seeing lately, they had to build muscle instead of stretch muscle. And this was brand new. The physiques of the children were changing before their very eyes, and they blamed the car. They said, you know, kids would rather jump in an automobile and drive two blocks than they would walk on their own two feet. Um, so this was a, a, you know, an interesting period of America. 1950, five years before I had started, 8% of American households had television sets. By the end of that decade, that number had jumped to 88%. Americans, Americans were no longer uh, living life on the soles of their feet, but on this, uh, by, by the seat of their pants, uh, as, as several folks said. Um, so into this mix, into this interesting period of transition in America, uh, comes this five foot two, 150 pound woman who did something quite amazing, something that wouldn't be repeated for quite some time. And in the process, um, she brought an unprecedented amount of attention to what is now a popular trail, but what at the time was a very little known uh, trail. Um, she brought an incredible amount of attention to the trail, and she also broke down this barrier that existed uh, among Americans. Only six men had hiked it before her. The founders of the trail never believed, never, never uh, did, didn't design it um, to be walked in one fell swoop. Uh, they designed it to be experienced and enjoyed, uh, you know, on vacation and if you want to go out for a hike and provide this primitive um, uh, preserve. Uh, near 60% of the American population is situated in the cities along the eastern seaboard. Um, so when she did it, she broke this barrier to, uh, to the trail that I think existed for many Americans. She was also incredibly critical of the Appalachian Trail. Uh, she wrote that an Indian would laugh at this. It goes up and, up and over the biggest hills. <laughs> I don't know why anybody would design a route like this. Well, of course, it was meant to be challenging. You know, um, she didn't get that picture when she first heard the trail in 1949. This very rosy uh, story about a National Geographic magazine. She was led to believe that it was uh, that, that anybody of moderate physical ability could quote hay foot straw foot from Georgia to Maine, and that there was uh, a trail as wide as a Mack truck, and uh, there were sleeping shelters within a day's walk, and there was food at the trail side. None of this turned out to be true, and, and she let that be known, that this was not a fun experience. Nevertheless, she did it again. She did it all three times in this way that is just crazy to me. She was completely unprepared. Uh, she had no sleeping bag. She had no tent. She wore tennis shoes. Um, she had no maps or compass. What, what she did have was just determination to put one foot in front of the other five million times. Um, so that's Emma's story in a nutshell. And if you'll let me, I'd love to read a passage which, uh, which I selected.